What's up everyone, Soldier First Class here, and today's mission, we're here to discuss the recently shown off Ghost of Tsushima gameplay. I took a break from playing Persona 5 Royal to watch today's state of play, and it did not disappoint. This presentation blew me away with insanely beautiful environments, slick action combat, exploration, and more. So let's dive right into it. Ghost of Tsushima is set on Tsushima Island and takes advantage of an open world setting. Jin, the main character, is one of the last remaining samurai, attempting to save his homeland from the Mongol invasion. The beautiful countryside is tainted by war, but that doesn't stop the game's environments from looking phenomenal. The bright rich colors of the Japanese countryside are in full effect, and combat taking place inside these environments is a sight to behold. From temples and abandoned houses to enemy camps, the environment is one you'll want to explore every inch of. But you don't have to worry about constantly running everywhere, as not only will you have access to horses, but once you've been somewhere, you can fast travel back to that location. Exploration isn't done in the typical hand-holding way, and location markers are very much like what you'd find in an Elder Scrolls game. Context clues such as smoke on the horizon or natural foliage and wildlife will lead you to secret locations and hidden treasures. You'll want to follow these markers to not only find shrines that improve Jin, but also see the rich history and locations in the game. For example, a bird showed the player a location where Mongols had destroyed a small wooden house and you were able to loot that house for supplies. Later, a fox showed the player a way to an Inari shrine which plays into improving Jin's charm limit. We'll go into what charms do a little later. Side note, you can pet the fox and probably tell him he's a good boy. Then there's the ability of exploration called Guiding Wind. The Guiding Wind is your sort of quest marker, but even this isn't holding your hand as you still need to follow it to an unknown location. Context clues play heavily into the exploration and feel like a natural part of the game's living world. You can use Guiding Wind by pressing right on the D-pad, which causes a visible gust of wind that points you in the right direction. Quests are given main objectives and side objectives as well. The one I saw in the state of play was destroying a shipyard. The main objective is to kill the war camp general with a bonus for killing three enemies with the half bow. This is pretty similar to Assassin's Creed's quest system. It'll be interesting to see what rewards you'll receive for completing all of the objectives. From exploration gameplay, I got heavy Shadow of Mordor vibes, and that's a really, really good thing. Shadow of Mordor is in my top 10 favorite games of all time, and if this game is anything like it, it might crack that list as well. Following along with that, it even features similar main and secondary weapons. Jin, the main character, is equipped with a katana and a shorter dagger-like sword known as a wakizashi, which is used more in the stealth parts of the game. He also comes equipped with a bow and several tools you'll need to defeat your enemies and traverse the Japanese landscape, such as a grappling hook. There are different combat playstyles depending on player choice, which I'm instantly in love with. While I love stealth elements, games that are full-on stealth tend to turn me off of them. I love the option of being stealthy when I want, or when the situation calls for it, but also having the ability to charge in and take my opponent on head-on. As a samurai, Jin will make use of head-on tactics while also being careful to pick his spots. He'll make use of different stances that help take on different enemy types and take advantage of all of his skills. A parry system will allow you to open up your enemies to massive damage or instant kills, and arrows can be deflected with proper timing. Samurai combat is very historically accurate, as they've hired actual swordsmen to help with fight mechanics. The great thing about playing as Ghost Jin is that he'll employ tactics that are frowned upon by the samurai teachings. He'll use distraction tools to misdirect his prey and either use his throwing daggers known as kunai, or he'll go in for stealth kills. As the ghost, Jin's enemies will begin to fear him across the land of Tsushima Island, instilling fear in even the strongest of warriors. Speaking of stealth, this game takes a similar approach as the Batman Arkham games or Shadow of Mordor. You'll find vantage points above your enemies where you can get the drop in them and take out a few before you have to take on the group. You'll also be able to chain assassinations together to help you better manage the numbers you'll face off against in the Mongol camps. At one point, they showed the player using firecrackers to distract an enemy and go in for a chain assassination. He also used smoke bombs, which either aid in your escape or serve as a flashbang-style grenade, which stuns the enemy and opens him up for attacks. Customization was shown off, and it honestly looks cool as hell. Jin wears several different types of armor styles, which are all customizable. You'll be able to customize the outfit you wear, even down to the color of said outfit. The gameplay display showed off several different variations of popular samurai armor and variants of the ghost armor Jin will use when in stealth. They didn't show the stat boost, but the presenter stated that the armor will accent your playstyle and that armor is not just for looks only. Charms are items that Jin can equip that allows him to have certain passive abilities. These include slowly recovering health while out of combat, or smoke bombs restoring 25% of your health. You can upgrade the amount of charms you can equip by praying at Inari shrines across the map. Players will also gain technique points which they can use to learn and upgrade their skills. Combine this with a charm system, the right set of armor, and personal skill, and you can tailor Jin to whatever playstyle you choose. I'm interested to see just how deep this can get, as I was a huge fan of Shadow of Mordor's skill system, which I felt was decently deep when it came to new mechanics. 
There were also a few minor features that were decently cool. You'll be able to play the game in full Japanese language track, which will give a more authentic feel to the game's location. They've also added photo mode, which is something I love messing around with in games and I can use the images for thumbnails. The final thing they added was a cinematic camera option. This option enables a black and white film grain that is heavily cinematic and feels like you're playing a 1950s samurai movie. I probably won't be using any of these options besides photo mode, but it is cool that Sucker Punch is so dedicated to the authenticity and inspirations for their game. Overall, this state of play was a great look at the gameplay and features of Ghost of Tsushima. This game looks to be the PS4's ultimate swan song and a great way to usher in the next generation. From brilliant landscapes to slick action combat, Ghost of Tsushima may be a contender for Game of the Year. With Sucker Punch's history of making fantastic games, this one appears to be no different. While I do love JRPGs, I love the idea of a samurai version of Shadow of Mordor as well, and we'll be covering this game more on the channel. So what do you think, soldiers? How will you play as the Ghost of Tsushima? Thanks for watching and don't forget to omni slash that like button. Let me know in the comments section below how you plan to play Ghost of Tsushima. Subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell to join the ranks of Soldier today. And for all the latest Ghost of Tsushima content, I'm Soldier First Class and I'm on to the next mission. Later guys.